how to add images to shapes in cavalry, PC or Mac. Now, there's a variety of different things. This will be a basic run through of adding an image to a shape. And you can use any shape. So I'm just going to go here with a circle. So circle, create that first. And with that, now I'll just remove that That's from the previous one. What you can now do is this, you've got this attribute editor and you've got a variety of different things, filters, deform, etc. But you've also got fill. So click there and you've got color. You can see the color there, color there. Right click to add a shader. And there's a variety of different ones. So add shader and just go down there. Image shader, that's the one you want. Now there's probably other ways of doing this, but this is the one I'm using. Image shader, select that. And now what you've got is you've got this over here on top of that one. It actually says bracket ellipse shape. So it's connected to that one. That's a key thing. So double click. With that, you've got this. And that again is in the attribute editor. And you can go down here and you'll notice you've got there, file. At the moment, there's nothing in it. Now I'm going to use the dragging technique. So dragging, what you need to do, just go over here. You've, obviously this will depend if you're on a PC or Mac. Simply go to a file, and I'm going to use this one, stretch.jpg. I assume it supports TIFFs, PNG, and lots of other formats, but I'm going with JPEG. Just drag, and you can see as you do that, you get a little plus and release. And then you've got your image. And that's it, if that's as far as you want to go. But you can see a lot of other options available, repeats, etc. So what you can then do, makes it again, it's selected, that's the key thing. With this, you can then go here, you can go for bilinear, none, which is fastest, or go with this one used for scaling up and so on for obviously the quality of the image. But also you got tiling. So you decide to go for maybe clamp. And now in some of these cases, you will not notice any difference. I will show you how to use them later, but you can see mirror, they're cool. You run through those. But let's just go for repeat first. Repeat and repeat. You got scaling here. So let's just change this. Now these are independent. So if I change that, you see it scales. I don't want that. What I want is to have them linked. So I can just click here and that links them. I'm not certain why that isn't the default. Personally, I think that should be the default, but what you can do is just do that. You can see then you've got your repeat. It's repeated multiple times, X and Y, but you can go clamp and you can see the result of that. You can go for decal, which is of course you, you can see the fill color then over on that side. Mirror, you can see it obviously blends left and right, blends together because of the mirror, but go with repeat again. And also you can offset it. So you can see as you do that, it moves back and forth. But also what you can do is you can do the Y because you've got tile in X there, where you can go with tile in Y. So repeat, mirror again, you can do the mirror the other way. And also you've got decal, which you get the result at the bottom. Also clamp, you can see it stretches it at the bottom where it's, personally, I just go with repeat. But you can vary these, fit vertical, fit horizontal, and so on. So there's a variety of different options, as well as the scale as well. So you can see, just change that and tweak that to your heart's content. But also you'll notice there, you've got other attributes as well. You've got blend modes. Now it's not the most interesting background that you'll be blending, but you've got here, options here for, you can run through this, say normal, and let's just go through the other ones there, destination over, destination out. Some just show nothing. But you can see screen, overlay, maybe darken, lighten, all kinds of ones. Color. Now, I'm not certain about every single one and what they actually do, to be honest. XOR, I'm not really certain. Or destination at top. I'm certain I will be doing videos on those once I work out the general mathematics behind each of these settings. But let's go with difference. So you can see the effect of difference here. Now it's very small, my apologies for that, but let's just extend it out so you can see it a bit better maybe there. But also what you can do, you can go up here and you've got linear and you've got sRGB to linear as well. And you can see you can create a variety of different designs using that. But you've also got other options as well because one of the things you can notice up here, you've got here, you've got fill and you've got this, but you can always right click, add shader. Let's just go for something else. So gradient shader. And you've got the gradient shader filling on top of this. Now, that's not ideal because you can't see anything now. But what you can do is you can go here, gradient shader. Let's just double click that. 
And the reason I chose gradient shader was instead of image shader, it gets a bit confusing when the names are much the same. So I've gone for the gradient shader, but you can see you can combine. So here, let's just go to the blend mode and you can go down here to screen. And you can see now what happens, you get this effect. So lighten, so you've got the gradient on top, you've got the image underneath, and also you've got the fill as well. So you've got two there now on top of it. And also, of course, you can modify the gradient. So you can click here and tweak the gradient, change the colors, maybe go for pink and so on. Whole variety of different options there. You've got reverse, screen, and so on. Now let's just get rid of those. And also, I haven't even touched on lots of these things like the scale, rotation, as well as, of course, the image and shape itself. They've all got things that you can add, such as filters to them, to create a variety of different effects as well. So at any point, just go here to stretch, double click there, and you can see you've got these. And it's obviously got the filters there, but also you've got lip shape, double click that, and you can go down here, and you can see, let's just go stretch there. Sometimes there's actually one trouble with it, I find this thing, this editor, it becomes lots and lots of things. So there's the shape. I don't think it's one of the best ways of doing this. It sort of maybe would be nice if it could sort of collapse. Maybe there's a feature for that. I have yet to find that feature. I guess that, that's what it does, just there. Yes, but still, that one doesn't have that. That's very odd, isn't it? You'd think you could collapse that as well. Maybe you can. But still, once you've done that, you can see you've also got filters and you've got deform. So you can still add other things. So click that little plus and then... You've got things like invert, fill color, distortion. So you quickly add distortion. And then you can see then you've got your design being distorted as well as the shape as well. A whole variety of different designs that can be created using this approach. And of course you can resize this and modify it as well a bit more. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know. For me, I'm running through this, exploring, trying to understand all the features. I am certain there are many other ways of adding images to shapes, as well as other things you can do with the shapes and images as well. So hopefully over time, also any comments, please put some comments if you know of better techniques, always great to hear of different ideas, different ways of doing things. So always great to hear from you. Bye.